you know, like yeah. the fish through the tornadoes? What if like the eggs get like stuck in the clouds and then that's what comes down? Would that be clear though? Uh, sometimes it can be. I don't know. Yeah. I, maybe. Maybe. But I, I don't, don't understand this whole stuck in the clouds thing. I, <laughs> right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not sure I believe that one. I, I just one time maybe, but six no. separate times <laughs> coming to the same place. I, I don't know. So then, yeah, the last theory I think is more probable and believable. And that is that the U.S. government was conducting some sort of like experiment of chemical war- warfare. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. Okay. I just want that said. I'm not crazy. Oh. <laughs> but I don't, if it's not that. And then it's fucking aliens. I just. <laughs> I'm not saying it's aliens. It I'm not saying it's aliens. But. But I'm also not saying it's not the government. So. It's always the freaking government. I just. I don't know. I'm going to sound like a real conspiracist right now. But it's always the government. <laughs> I mean. I I don't know. I just. It's, it's weird. So. Okay. So here's why I think this is the most likely. So when. The, the first time this fell. From the sky, there was a an elderly lady lady who had to go to the hospital because she was having like severe illness problems. Right, her daughter brought a sample in while she was in the hospital. They had it tested. The technician, the lab tech, said that he claimed that he saw human white blood cells in the sample. It was later disproved, but then that sample was sent to the Washington State Health Lab, who determined it was capable of, of carrying and growing two types of bacteria. So then the, that technician was studying it and concluded that it was a man-made substance that was a vehicle for transporting a virus or bacteria. And this is according to an article on medium.com. So that technician reported their findings, and one day those samples all mysteriously disappeared. And he was told by his uh, supervisor, forget all about it, don't speak of it again, I don't like that. It's highly suspect. That I do not. Right. Like that so if at all. if that account is to be believed, it disappeared, and he was not to have any knowledge of what what it was or. What so happened. the government's trying to kill us now. <clears throat> They've always been trying to. I mean, yes, but <laughs> I don't know. That's the thing. So then I found this news article in the Freelance Star out of Virginia, of all places. Why are they reporting on this? I have no clue. <laughs> They're bored. <laughs> They're bored. What goes on in Virginia? Well, apparently a lot because this newspaper was full. Sorry, Virginians. Sorry. It, it was full. Um, I'm not going to lie. There was a lot there. Like <laughs> this was split between the main, the first page and then like the 14th page of the first section. And I was like scrolling through on Google Docs and it was just crammed full of shit. All right. Like, okay. All right, Virginia. Yeah. So and this article is from August 20th of 1994. So right after this happened. And it talks about some of the local reactions. And then there's more of an account of the woman who had to take her mom to the hospital and, like, what happened. The town started, like, this petition to start having an annual jellyfish festival where they wanted to load a bunch of deceased jellyfish in a cannon and shoot them out over the town oh to celebrate God. the event. Excuse me. Which town is this? Oakville. In Washington? Yes. Excuse me. That's it's like a little so... town of like 700 people. It's tiny. What the hell? Well, yeah. they all done lost their damn minds. Apparently. Let's just shoot dead things into the, the air. Right. What in the world? Yeah, I like the little particles and have them raining down. And <laughs> your dad said, I wonder what SpongeBob would say of that. <gasps> he would be devastated. Y'all are disappointing SpongeBob. Uh, you done, you done goofed. You done messed up, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, SpongeBob would be ashamed. If you upset SpongeBob, you obviously did something wrong. <laughs> right. If SpongeBob is disappointed in you, you're Squidward. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're Plankton. No, not even you're Plankton. You're he plankton. redeemed. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we're ever going there. Thank you. Yeah, no, I think we'll bypass that. We can go around it. I don't even want to go near it. <laughs> I don't I don't even want the possibility of jellyfish raining down on me or chemical warfare. So we're gonna stay the hell away from that place. I mean, I don't think they chemical warfare the same place twice, but 
well, they did it six times, so I guess what's stopping them from a seventh? I mean, what really is? So here's the funny thing of this. I remember watching this episode when it, like, ran as reruns, because in the 2000s, Lifetime Network had Unsolved Mysteries running as reruns. Mm -hmm. And then they actually, like, took over. I think it, like, moved from CBS to to Lifetime, okay? And I remember calling my grandma... (laughs) And we would talk about episodes that we watched in weird cases. And I remember calling her and asking her if she'd ever heard of anything like this. Because she had, you know, lived out in the wilderness in Alaska for a few years. And she, uh, they'd lived up here for a little while when mom was born. So I was kind of like, hey, I know this is before, like you lived in this area before all this happened. But have you ever heard about this? And she was like, no, that's, I've never heard of that in my life. And. I clearly remember having this conversation with her because, me being me, I said it sounds like some weird KY jelly explosion from a porn convention. <laughs> and my oh poor my grandma. God. Why would you say that to your grandmother? I don't know. <laughs> You're going to give your grandmother a free and a heart attack. Jeez. She loved me. She just kind of chuckled and she was like, okay, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> poor grandma. I, I know. But I clearly remember the conversation, so I, because of that. <laughs> Such fond memories of Grammy. Yes. Love I it. love my grandmother. She humored me. <laughs> yeah. She had to. She didn't have to. <laughs> she, she didn't have to. Um, but yeah, she watched the episode too, and she she just couldn't decide what to make of it. We had our theories. Yeah, it was interesting. I also want to add that this morning, as I was driving home from my appointment, I was listening to My Favorite Murder, and there was a a hometown episode that had a letter from a listener on this very story. So by no means am I taking this from them. I have, like, had research this weeks ago. So just so anybody knows, we're clear. Stealing. I'm not taking anybody else's information. I had researched this. Okay, so this last story is not actually, like, a story. It's more of, like, a call to action I had recently heard of a prisoner who's on death row in Alabama. His name is Rocky Myers. He is 53 years old. He's on um, death row. He's been there since the 90s. And he has an intellectual disability. And his story is heartbreaking. Unfortunately, as I was looking at his, this is only like one of a few cases that I found on this exact type of thing. So it happens and it's disturbing. I, I could do, like, this story could warrant its own episode, but recently I had watched something on YouTube called uh, Murder, Mystery, and Makeup, and it's by Bailey Seri, and she does this every Monday on her channel, and she actually is where I got that information as she was spreading around this um, link for a petition to save him from being executed, wrongly executed on death row. So she actually, just this last Monday, put out the episode about him. And she did the research and everything better than I could do it. So I, I'm going to lead everybody to her page. I don't want to like redo what she's done because she did so well. And the information's out there. Um, I'll just give you a few details so that, you know, you guys kind of know what you're, you're looking for. But I'm going to read the link from the ACLU website that's on the petition just to kind of give you the background because it summarizes it very well. So this is from the website. The case of Rocky Myers is a window into so much that's wrong with the death penalty in this country. The 53-year-old who has an intellectual disability was saddled with an incompetent lawyer, convicted on evidence from a key witness who has since recanted his testimony, and then sentenced to death by a judge who imposed the death sentence against the jury's wishes. Now he is one of 175 prisoners on death row in Alabama, despite all the faults in his case and with absolutely no evidence tying him to the scene of the crime. The Supreme Court has ruled that defendants with intellectual disabilities, it's actually unconstitutional to rule that they get the death penalty. But these cases have not been overturned. So he's still sitting on death row. I just wanted to bring light to this because he may or may not have committed the crime. There's a lot of shady shit that happened with his trial, his lawyer started off with a opening statement saying, I'm so sorry to a mostly white jury. And this man is African-American. 
I'm so sorry that I even have to discuss where this crime happened because I know most of you don't live in such a horrible area. Oh, okay. Why would you apologize for that? <laughs> Why would you need to bring that into it at all? I'm so sorry. Right. That makes no sense at all. It makes no sense at all. Eventually, his lawyer actually stopped working for him and did not tell him he stopped working for him. So this man is convicted. Four years go by. He thinks his lawyer is working on appeals, working on getting him the help that he needs to get this overturned. He stopped working for him. What an asshat. Basically. The judge, so in Alabama... You, as uh, as a judge, there's two, three states altogether that could do this. Two of them, well, all three of them have since uh, stopped allowing judges to overrule what the, the jury decides. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In 2017, Alabama was the last state to do that. 20 fucking 17. That is way too recent. <laughs> it's absolutely uh, unacceptable. So this judge was up for re-election. So after the jury came back and said, we recommend life in prison without parole, he, a few months later, was like, no, you know, not good enough. We're going to do death penalty. After the fact? After the fact. Why are you so pressed? It's it's unreal. Just had to go out of my way to be an asshole. Basically. Have a nice day. So, I mean, things are adding up. Things are not right. Like I said, may he may or may not have committed that crime. But in this country, you deserve the right to a fair trial. You deserve the right to representation that will actually plead for your case and not discriminate against you while you're sitting right there. You, as a person with an intellectual disability, have the right to have things explained to you so that you understand them. Yeah. And that is what makes this heartbreaking. Whether you read the information that is out there and you still feel he's guilty or not, he did not get a fair trial. And that's what my point is. This is the shit that is unreal and needs to stop. So basically, I'm asking everybody to do your homework. Find out, uh, you know, what you can do to help. I'm going to link the ACLU uh, website where you can sign the petition for Rocky There's other cases. Find cases in your area. Find out where this is happening. Not everybody can go and protest. Not everybody can go and, you know, give legal advice and be a lawyer. But everybody can contact their representatives. Everybody can vote. Everybody um, can get out and affect change. Do something. Find it. Try to make it right. And I'm going to link the the YouTube video as well because I think she did a really good job of explaining like from beginning to end all the key players and how the timeline works and and everything like that. It's actually not a news story, but very important, I felt, to get out. Yeah, it's very important because it really sucks for people who have disabilities, like especially intellectual disabilities, and they're supposed to be treated like normal human beings, but they don't comprehend it the same way or they weren't told just try and help them out like no everyone thinks that they're just stupid so like they don't even try and help them out they just decide everything for them yeah you have to make sure it's in terms they can understand yeah right and in this gentleman's case he can't read above a third grade level Ah, so so how is he ever gonna read a legal document i can barely read a legal document and i'm educated i read a lot i read a lot of things that are um, complicated or simple i mean i don't I, i i read a lot and i can comprehend a lot at third grade trying to read a, a legal document yeah you're no. fucking kidding how is that person supposed to keep up on what's going on with their case how they it's, don't it's not possible and nobody cares to even make it happen no no nobody cared Nobody what cared. kind of upsets me is like there's prisons in or Sweden or something that are actually rehabilitation centers that help you get past why you did that crime and help you have a better life. And then here in the United States, it's the worst place that you could be and it makes it even worse for you. It doesn't help you. I don't think it rehabilitates anybody. No, no. there's no rehabilitation. This is basically, this is my issue with the criminal system is we privatized jails. Yep. They should never be privatized. When when funding is coming from a, a, a certain source, that means that they get a say. 
that doesn't mean that it's going to be to the benefit of anybody. Yeah. Also, what we claim is rehabilitation.